my dudes what is up welcome to my tiny home and welcome to my channel welcome to the first video of 2024 my name is stacy i have been waiting to record this video for a few days now i've been trying to avoid the rain you can probably hear it pitter pattering on my roof right now but it just keeps raining. It's been raining for like five days straight and I don't wanna postpone <laughs> recording this video any longer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Hopefully it's a nice little ASMR effect in the background and not too distracting. In today's video, I wanna talk about eco-puritanism, if you will, this gatekeeping aspect of the environmentalist movement. So this initially started aggravating me back in I think it was 2018 2019 when I went to my first Fridays for Future climate march in Toronto and I was surrounded by a group of we can call them militant vegans who had these signs that basically said if you are not a vegan you are not an environmentalist or you are not part of the solution you are part of the problem so i'm going to use the word environmentalist for the simplicity sake and i will say that most of the vegans that i've met in my personal life they are not going about their life trying to tell everyone that they have to be vegan as well otherwise you know they won't interact with them because they don't align with their values or whatever most vegans are just wonderful people who are trying to improve their health who care about animal welfare or care about the environment. And I will start by saying there is no debate that a vegan diet of all the diets that you could possibly eat is the most beneficial for the health of the environment. Another thing that I want to get out of the way at the beginning of this video, and I don't think most of you watching would feel this way. I've seen a lot of climate deniers say things like, who gives a about the turtles or the dolphins or whatever. We cannot separate ourselves from nature. The planet will be just fine, regardless of how many degrees in warming we get on a global average that continues to increase. The earth will continue to be fine if all of our coastal cities end up getting flooded. What won't be okay is human life on this earth. So this idea that nature is one thing and we are another thing in these built environments that we've created, especially people who live in urban environments, there's this level of disconnection from the natural world. But we are fundamentally tied to one another. So for me, being an environmentalist means that I am concerned with the wellness, the health of our planet, of our natural resources, of our atmosphere and the air within it and how it affects all wildlife underwater, on land, including human beings. None of these things are in a silo. None of these things can be separated. We are all connected, okay? Now, getting that out of the way, why am I not vegan? For me personally, I think it's more important to have strong habits but to be flexible and allow myself to indulge every once in a while. Let me try to do a better job at articulating the philosophy here. So it doesn't mean that I'm never going to do the things in the right column, but I want my first instinct or my habit to compel me to look to the things in the left column first. So before I choose an animal protein, I want to look at a plant-based protein. Another way you can do this is supplementing some animal protein. So let's say I'm making beef tacos. I can use half the amount of beef and then fill the rest with lentils. So that further reduces the amount of animal-based protein that I need. Before I think to buy something new, can I look to secondhand markets first? Before I look to an international company, can I make sure that I've exhausted all of my local options? This especially applies to food. I want to support small business first before I support big corporations. 
I want to repair things. This one is definitely an instinct or a habit that you want to develop before you think to replace something that is broken. I want to make things myself before I think about buying it. I want to refill before I buy things packaged or kind of grouped into this category. If I need to buy things packaged, I want to look for like glass jars, for example, that I can reuse and refill or look for compostable or biodegradable packaging instead of plastic. So when it comes to my daily habits, I focus on plant-based first. I will say that dairy and eggs are a fundamental part of my diet, something I consume on a daily basis. And my diet has fluctuated and changed throughout the years. I had a lot of gastrointestinal issues in my 20s. And so I had to go on a low FODMAP diet. This basically ruled out a lot of the pillars of a healthy vegan diet, especially if you're looking for certain sources of protein. So the things I had to eliminate from my diet were mushrooms, brassica vegetables like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, legumes. So all beans, chickpeas, lentils, soy based products so tofu tempeh miso also all gluten all dairy and alliums like garlic and onions so basically i was allowed to eat any meat protein that i wanted fish eggs and a few vegetables a lot of fruits and vegetables were also restricted um, it was really miserable after a certain period of time, I was able to slowly introduce certain foods and see how my body reacted to it. And eventually, you know, I did get end up getting diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder and my health has changed over the years. But bearing in mind that not everybody could eat a vegan diet. People have allergies, people have IBS, people have food sensitivities, and a lot of legumes or quinoa or copious amounts of spinach that would equate to the same amount of protein as you would get from a smaller amount of chicken, let's say. It's just not something that they can sustain in the long term without gut issues, without inflaming certain chronic conditions they may have. So let's put those people aside. I think we can all agree that those people get an exception. So if we imagine that, you know, 10% of all Americans or Western people suddenly become a vegan tomorrow. Wouldn't it be better if 80% or 75% of Americans reduced their meat consumption by 20%, 25%? If we were to eat meat less often, but still have, and not just meat again, like eggs or dairy every once in a while, that would actually be more beneficial for the health of the environment. And I think it's more sustainable. And by that, I mean, it's more likely to be adopted by more people. And for you to be able to actually implement that in your life on a routine basis, just like if you're on a strict diet, and you're only allowed to eat like grapefruits and celery, that slice of bread is going to look really tempting. So if you allow yourself in moderation, to make the best nutritional choices for yourself. And I am not a dietitian. I'm not your doctor. Do not come to me for <laughs> medical or health advice. But I think you're much less likely to break that diet or give up or quit or relapse or whatever you want to call it. If you have a diet that you can actually implement on a daily basis, going back to that climate march, when people were telling me someone who supports small businesses, buys local. At this time, I didn't own a gas vehicle. I didn't even know how to drive. I was riding my bike and walking and taking public transit. I was volunteering, doing trash pickups. I was buying thrifted clothes and not consuming fast fashion. I was advocating in local government and people were telling me that I wasn't good enough just because I eat eggs. That kind of attitude, I think, actually does our cause a lot more harm than it does good. 
And if our ultimate goal is to persuade as many people as possible, wouldn't we want to encourage people to do the best that they can and to push themselves to always do a little bit better instead of demanding perfection from them? So we can always call someone else a hypocrite. We can always point the finger at somebody else. If we're looking at problems when it comes to our food system, the biggest problem by far is our amount of food waste. That's food waste from the agricultural system to shipping it to a grocery store. How much is the grocery store wasting? How much are the restaurants wasting? And then how much do we bring into our own home that we end up wasting and not composting instead of putting it into a landfill? I don't see that many vegans talking about the importance of mitigating and reducing food waste. I don't see a lot of people talking about the carbon footprint that we're producing by getting everything delivered to us, getting everything shipped to our door. We are all participating in some way or another, either because we have no choice, and if we had better choices, we would opt into them, because we live in this modern society. Like, there's no way to escape it. I just think that pointing the finger is a never-ending, regressive cycle of futility. It doesn't help anyone. If it does make you feel better, I think you should analyze why that is. Turn that finger around and look at yourself and what you have control over and what you can exercise control over. Another thing I will just say quickly, because I know a lot of folks say our individual actions don't matter because the real problem is the people at the top, the leaders of our government, people who own these corporations. If we wanted to buy products that were packaged in less plastic, that were using more sustainable agricultural systems like avocados, for example. That's a vegan food. It's causing deforestation to feed the Western appetite for avocados. So just because you're eating a vegan diet does not mean that all of the foods that you're eating are ethically sourced, that they are contributing to biodiversity. And that's not your fault. I'm sure if there was a way in which we could have more sustainable agriculture, less monoculture, more regenerative agriculture, that you would want to support that as long as you can uh, afford to do so. That's another thing. So I don't want to say that those corporations or the people at the top aren't more accountable than us, but that doesn't mean that we can absolve ourselves of all accountability. Our individual actions do matter, ultimately because with our conversations that we have at the dinner table, that we have with our friends, that we have on social media, we shift the culture. And we can look at so many examples of that. In even my short lifetime, I was marching as a teenager for the legalization of And now in my country, I can buy it at multiple dispensaries everywhere. There are so many different examples that we can look to and how things that seemed very fringe or very counter culture, not part of the mainstream, very quickly shift and become part of the mainstream. So I will end by saying, I think that we can influence more change and bring more people into our movement if we start from a place of hope instead of a place of fear, instead of a place of judgment instead of a place of all doom and gloom. And that doesn't mean that there isn't an urgency that we need to convey. But I think we can do so in such a way that is to say, we can turn this around. We have the ingenuity, and in some cases it's not even new technologies that need to be invented. We have the solutions already. We just need to implement them in our own lives. And that will eventually spread and affect those corporations that have more sway and more direct impact on how our climate is changing. And I am very hopeful. And that's why I try to, as best as I can, when I talk about sustainability, 
environmental consciousness, to do it in such a way that encourages you to try new things, to change your habits in a way that you can sustain in the long term, that doesn't break your pocketbook. All we can do is the best that we can do and try to strive to be better and give ourselves grace to understand that perfect doesn't exist. I'm sure none of you will be surprised to hear me say that, but I would love to hear what you guys think about this topic. How are you trying to incorporate more sustainable or intentional consumerist practices in your new year? Let us know in the comments down below. Let's inspire one another to create this spirit of hope and positive change moving into 2024. So that's all for now, folks. Take it easy.